Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Facebook Live. I'm Shanae at, from Sedgwick County Zoo, and I am so glad that you're here with us today. It's a little chilly outside today, so we thought maybe this would be a great time to take an adventure in our tropics building, focusing on the smaller animals that we have in the building, those invertebrates. Now, as I turn my camera around here, we'll focus on some of these invertebrates that are here. The most amazing thing about invertebrates to me they make up the majority of the animal world. When we think about animals, we generally think about elephants and tigers and cats and, and ostriches and all sorts of different animals, but we don't think about the invertebrates, which are literally the backbone of the animal world. Now it's said that somewhere over 95% of all animals known and extinct, alive and extinct, are actually invertebrates. Invertebrates are animals that do not have a, a bone structure system. Um, in most cases, they have an exoskeleton, a crispy, crunchy coating that keeps their insides in and their outsides out. Now, of all the invertebrates that are anything from a spider to a cockroach to a jellyfish to a crab, most invertebrates are arthropods. Arthropods make up more than three-fourths of all the organisms on our planet. And arthropods are animals, again, that are known for having that exoskeleton. So today we're just going to look at a few of our invertebrates that we have here in our tropics building. The first one that I have uh, on camera is the giant cave cockroach. Now truly, this is the stuff that is made of horror movies. Um, this is the uh, one of the largest cockroaches in the world and can measure up to four inches long. Now the adults have these wings. If you look right there, you can kind of see those little wings, but they can't fly. They really more flutter than anything else. Now, even though these like, may look like big, massive animals, you really don't have to worry about them too much around you uh, because they prefer to live away from humans. They would like to live in those dark, humid areas such as caves and hollow trees and rock crevices throughout Central and South America. Now, cockroaches are animals that do something really interesting as far as babies go. Generally, we think of animals that have live birth. We call those animals that are viviparous. Then there's animals that lay eggs like chickens. They're oviparous. But animals like cockroaches are ovoviviparous, which means they have a cocoon-like egg case that they keep inside of their body and during the birthing process, that case is pushed out and then the living young emerge out of that egg case. So it's kind of a combination of both egg and live young all at the same time. Now you might notice with these giant cave cockroaches, there's two different looks. The ones that have kind of the black square on their heads are considered the adults. Um, the ones that are more speckled are juveniles. They're a little bit younger or sometimes they're animals that have just molted now, a molt is when they lose that exoskeleton. So if I can pan down here a little bit, you might be able to see the exoskeleton right there. That's actually not a cockroach. That is that skin, that exoskeleton that they have shed. Once they shed that exoskeleton then, their bodies generally look slightly different. Um, with the Madagascar hissing cockroaches that we have in the education center, they're actually white for about the first 24 hours. Um, once they, that exoskeleton hardens up, they start to look like those adults, like what you can see right in there. So animals like cave cockroaches are certainly important animals. I know none of you want to see them in your houses, but you're in luck because they don't, again, like to live near us. And they are animals that we would call decomposers. They are animals that do such a great job of eating the stuff that is on the forest floor, that plant matter, um, uh, rotten leaves, any of that type of, of product on the forest floor they eat, and then poop it out. Now, poop is also a very important thing in nature, and we can see with all the feces and soil down here, that breaks down and allows nutrients to go back to the soil. Now that I've probably grossed you out, starting with cockroaches, let's go ahead and move to, a, a, I think, quite a beautiful little beetle. This is the yellow-bellied flower beetle. 
Now you can certainly see where they get their name, um, the yellow bellied, and they do, I think, look a little bit like a flower with those colorations, um, but they're also called fruit beetles because they eat a variety of fruits, saps, pollen, and flowers. And those beautiful colors that you see actually match the flowers in which they feed. So it helps them blend in or camouflage to where they would actually be living. Now, where the giant cave co cockroaches were from South America, um, the yellow-bellied flower beetle is actually found in Africa. So we can see there's a difference there in what they, uh, where they live. And again, invertebrates can live all over the world. Now, with these particular females, they'll lay their eggs in the soil um, and then hatchling beetles, or those larvae, are known as grubs. Now, if you're like my kids at home, um, with all this rain, some of those worms and grubs have come up. They love to go out and grub hunt. They like to catch those grubs and, and save them for when we go fishing next, or just to look at them and observe them. So when these beetles hatch out, they're first those grubs, and then they go ahead and feed on all that decaying matter on the forest floor, again, being really good decomposers out there there, making sure that uh, they can keep the forest floors clean as well. Once they become adults then, um, they will start to construct a cocoon in the soil and then uh, begin the process of metamorphosis into this adult stage. So again, a beautiful beetle right here. Um, there was a question is, do they bite? Um, I like to always say that all animals that have mouth parts can bite, but many of them, especially with these invertebrates, they just simply don't have mouth parts big enough to bother us. Um, so although most animals bite as a way of finding their food, generally, um, often they don't have enough strength to be able to bite through us. And these particular animals, once they're adults, only live for about two to five months. So they're a fairly short-lived animal in the tropics. Now we're gonna switch gears. We've looked at a couple of, of beetles and beetle-like animals. We're gonna go ahead and scoot all the way over here to I, I think a really interesting animal if we can zoom in and see them right there. These are stick insects and this happens to be the thorny devil stick insect. The thorny devil gets its name, see if I can get in on this one a little bit better. Nope, the light's just a little shiny. We're gonna go back over here. The thorny devil gets its name because the male is a little bit of a reddish color and it has this large spine on the end of its leg. That spine then is used to spar with other males to help attract females. Um, it's also used to uh, protect its area and um, natives uh, in New Guinea where the, thick, the stick insect would live actually have been known to use these as fish hooks. Now, so you can see it a little bit better. I'm gonna go up here on the graphic. If you look here, you can see right there where that little uh, spur is or that little thorn is on their leg. That allows them then to protect their area and to attract females. Now these are definitely rainforest animals, but often when we think of stick insects, we think of animals that have to live on branches and trees. The thorny devil actually likes to also live on the forest floor. They'll spend all day down on the forest floor eating again rotten logs and dead leaves and really helping with that decomposition in the tropics. And at night, they climb up into the trees to eat the leaves and then they return down to the ground in the morning. Females here are egg layers. They will lay hundreds of eggs that are about the size of small seeds in the soil and um, they, the eggs take about four months to hatch, which is a really, really long time. You figure most bird eggs don't take more than 21 days. The weird, crazy thing here is that if a female does not encounter a male, she can go ahead and lay those unfertilized eggs and all those eggs will still hatch as females. So we'll call that, we call that parthenogenesis in science. Now I'm gonna walk around the corner here so we can look at a couple of more invertebrates. Again, one that sometimes is one uh, that, that scares people maybe more than it needs to. This particular one is the Bornean forest scorpion. You can kind of see there's two right there next to that water bowl. 
The Bornean forest scorpion, as you can imagine, is from Southeast Asia or the Borneo. And what surprises everyone about uh, most scorpions, not all, but most, is that they actually are great moms. Their babies are born live. They're generally white in color for the first few days, and they'll climb up onto mom's back. There, um, some moms will actually capture food to feed her babies until their first molt. Once they have that first bolt, molt, though, they zoom off mom's back and go try and find their own places to live. Now, scorpions are arachnids. Um, scorpions and spiders are related in that they are all arachnids. Scorpions are a little bit different in that you see those two pinchers on their legs. Now, they are venomous. If you look at the back of the tail there, you can see that there is a, a, a little uh, venom gland. Um, however, the venom is more used to uh, help in uh, getting their food and not necessarily always from being a, a, a way of protecting themselves. So we see sometimes these animals that surprise us the most um, because they're so creepy looking can do some of the coolest things as well. Now, we do have scorpions here in Kansas. They're very small. Um, they're called brown or bark scorpions. Um, they also have stingers, and they can sting. And I can tell you from personal experience, it does hurt when it happens. We're going to go ahead and look at one last animal. I was really hoping we could see one of our spiders today. Um, but you just can see a couple of legs there. This is our Brazilian salmon pink bird-eating spider. Yes, it gets the name bird eating because what do you think it eats? Birds. It's amazing. Now, it doesn't just eat birds. It actually will eat almost anything that it can catch and eat. They'll eat insects, amphibians, reptiles, and again, even those small birds. Now, these are ground-dwelling animals. That's why this tarantula is doing exactly what it needs to do. It's hiding down there under the brush as it would. Uh, most people would walk by a tarantula like this in, in northern Brazil where it lives and never even know it's there. So thank you guys for taking a tour with me along some of the invertebrates that we have in our tropics building. We're going to end with our spiny stick insect here. This particular one is also from Borneo, but this is an animal that would live more in the trees instead of on the ground. Now as we get uh, throughout the rest of the year, we are actually looking at expanding our invertebrate collection and putting more invertebrates down in our tropics cave. So shortly we'll continue to show more and more of these amazing amazing animals that make up the majority of the animal world. Remember, even though we're closed, we're still caring, and we have plenty of ways that you can interact with us virtually. We are still offering those Zooming with the Zoos, those, those social areas where you can come in and visit with us privately. We also have the Virtually Wild programs where if you just want to have a little bit more fun in your meeting, you can have us come in and just, by gosh, have a spiny stick insect uh, as one of the one of the people attending your meeting. Thanks everybody and have a great day.